Hello and welcome to Skill of the Week for the Bridget Riley Op Art Project. So we discussed Bridget Riley in our 8th grade class and we are going to make our own op art that's similar to what she did and we're using colors that are vibrating. So we have de developed our design and I showed this in class on how to create your optical illusion design. We just used a template that we cut ourselves and then we traced it over and over again moving it down the page so that it vibrates. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to tape the picture onto our board that we're going to be using so that when we paint our picture doesn't move around and it won't uh, ripple and that kind of stuff. It'll just stay in place. Oops. So we're just going to tape about a quarter of an inch on the edge there so that we create a little frame. And you want to make sure that you are pushing that tape down so that it really holds on to your paper. And I use, I'll usually use my fingernail so that I really make sure that it's up against the paper really well. Okay, so now that it's all taped down, I'm ready to decide what colors I want to use. And I have chosen magenta. Now, I'm using the acrylic magenta because I don't have any magenta in my little acrylic small containers. And I'm using this blue-green color. It's called Ocean Blue. Uh, I just thought it would look really interesting against the magenta. And it says over there, uh, magenta and green or magenta and blue will will vibrate. So I figured the blue-green will probably do the same. I'm going to go ahead and start with my magenta color and I'm only going to paint magenta to start. Now it's very important to know what tools you're going to use. Now I'm going to use a combination of things. I'm going to use this fine point brush and you want to have one that's got a really nice tip on it. You don't want bristles splayed out all over the place. And I'm also going to use an angle brush. Now look at the angle here and then look at how the bristles are nice and tightly compacted. That's the kind of brush you want. You don't want bristles sticking out all over in different directions, otherwise it's not a very good brush. Now I'm going to just use this little cap because at the end I can just toss it and I don't have to do any cleanup except for with my brushes. I've shaken this up and I don't want to do it over my painting so I'm going to squirt just a little bit into my cup. I don't need very much because a little goes a long way on this type of painting. And I've already marked out which ones need to be painted uh, the magenta color. And I made just little tiny marks on there so that it wouldn't be noticeable. And I know that this first mark and this first mark are going to need be needed to be painted a magenta color. And it looks like I got a little bristle sticking up out of the way, so I'm going to kind of try to get it out of the way. I might have to trim that off. And I'm just going to paint really close to the line and I can overlap my tape. Okay, Slow and steady is how you want to paint. This is another one of my marked areas. You don't want to go fast and you want to paint in one smooth motion. Okay, If you use a lot of brush strokes, like I'm going to do it on the tape here, if you do this, you tend to not get a very straight line. See, look at there. I've got jaggedy lines there. But if you use a nice clean motion, you're going to get a clean line. Okay, get a little bit more paint, clean up that last little bit, and then I'm ready to move on to my next section. Okay, now I know that it's right beside this one. This, I'd have to skip this one and go on to this one. So I'm going to go ahead, and since this is a bigger area, I'm going to paint with this one in the small area. And I'm just going to kind of outline the line. I want to try and get as close to that line as I can without getting a jagged line. And then I'm going to put my paintbrush down and I'm going to move to my angle brush. And I'm going to start here and move that brush right along the edge. See how it's giving me a nice clean line? But it's starting to fade out right there. Okay, so as it starts to fade out, then I want to get some more paint. You don't want to just try to brush, brush, brush all the time. If you do too much brushing, 
like I said, you'll go out of the lines. So I'm just going to come up here. Now be careful because I am getting kind of thick there and I'm starting to get close to my line so I can turn my angle brush and then I can fill it in the rest of the way just using it with the small angle. Okay, and then I can fill that in. Now I'm going to go back here. I'm going to put my brush on the line and run it right down the edge. I'm starting to run out of paint so I get in here, get some more using that angle right up against the line okay finish it off now I ran out of paint a little bit so I'm gonna grab a little more paint and brush it in there and then I can fill the space and I want to have nice clean areas because I don't want to have too little paint in some areas and too much paint in other areas. So I want to have a nice, smooth, painted area. So notice those last ones I just did more of a solid area because it had some areas that were thick and some areas that were thin. Okay, so now this one's going to get skipped. That one gets skipped. Okay, so I would move down to this one. Okay. So I'm putting my finger on it to make sure I remember where it is, and then I'm going to start here at the edge, paint that area, paint the other side so I can do my filling space. That'll be faster. Okay. Fill that up, and then I can just finish on this side. Okay, right up against that pencil line. Now it's starting to run out of paint again, so I'm flipping my brush this time because I'm going to use that paint on the other side. Oh, starting to run out of paint. So I'm going to go back. I had kind of a blob here, and I'm going to move that paint down. Okay, and now I can go back here and just work my way down on the other side. Now take your time. I have a pretty steady hand so I can go pretty quickly and I can know that I'm on my line but if you don't have a very steady hand then you just need to slow down. Okay. Now as you can see I'm kind of uh, brushing off my brush in the middle a little bit before I get started because I don't want too big of a blob of paint to start with but I can always go back and grab that paint then and continue to paint with it if I run out. See, I just grabbed a little of that paint. Now I'm doing this other side. Now, you might have to turn your painting so that you can see the line or adjust your body because you want to make sure that you are right on that line. And I have some pretty light pencil lines, so it can make it kind of hard to see. But you're going to be better off because if you choose to do a very light color, then you're going to need to have very light lines. If your pencil lines are super dark, choose a couple of dark colors. Okay, so now I can just fill that in because that was all one shape. Now, I want you to see this before I go back and make some touch-ups. See where I've got some really thick color there and then it's kind of thin over here. That's when you can do a second coat to just finish that off, make it nice and even so that you have all the same value of color all the way across. And for me, doing the second coat usually goes a little faster, but, um, but you still want to take your time at the edges. I can go fast in the middle, but then at the edge, I want to make sure I still slow down so I don't go out of my lines and keep turning that paper because you don't want to stick your elbow in a in the paint or your sleeve you don't want to drag your sleeve across so you might have to work around the edges okay and sometimes I pull the brush towards me sometimes I push it away from me it's whatever's comfortable for you really Okay, 
So you get the idea that you're going to just go every other one, painting very carefully with either your fine tip brush, your pointed brush, or your angle brush. Okay, and making sure that you have good brushes. And then use those techniques I show in the video on how to wash your brushes to make sure your brushes get nice and clean and still keep that nice, beautiful point. We're going to stop here for now. I'm going to paint a little bit more of on it, and then I'll come back and show you when I get working on the green area.